All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is a very special topic, and I hope people will focus with me. And uh, we need to think a little bit deep uh, about who we are. In the world, there is many religions. Many, many, many religions. And each one of them, he have a claim. Some in the West uh, who are suffering from emptiness in their life because West have a special uh, kind of uh, problems where a family is not very close together and, uh, you know, life became, uh, most of it is lonely life. A person he just get a cat or a dog and you know try to live with that just trying to let us say forget some uh, issues you have and then some they try to empty their uh, the emptiness in their life in different way uh, which is religion I saw some European people they became Buddhas I saw some, uh, they became uh, Muslims. I saw some, they became atheists. I saw many who they are Christians. But all of those people, they are uh, reaching for needs they have. When you are a person who find that uh, belief did not satisfy you, so you choose not to believe because belief is giving you headache. When you are a person, Christianity is not uh, is not what you are looking for. Maybe you are a person who like aggressive stuff. A person who like uh, action, violent maybe. You go to jail, you convert to Islam. Because Christianity says love your enemy and this is not something you like. Then you will find something fit with you. If you are a person who is looking for yoga, sit in your bum and spend your day thinking about nothing and thinking that you are the center of the universe, which is nothing but fiction and fantasy, then you choose that. So at the end of the day, we choose what is making us feel better. It's us. It is us, and you know, even those who think they are looking for God, they are looking for us. How I can be as I wish and as I like. So you choose from options. You go to school, you see a teacher saying to you that one day you used to be a natron and tatron, a batron, and satron, and then two tetron, they make out a through netron, and then you became a movement, and then you became a creature. If you are a person who believe in fictions, or you like fictions, well, this is a good theory. Actually, I've been asked by somebody, he says, do the alien worship Jesus? And I said to myself, I think this guy, he thinks the alien are real. Did you see the alien first? So people they are, like, I don't know, like uh, sometimes we are, maybe we look mature as adult, maybe we have a beard, maybe you are a growing woman, maybe, 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 but most of us, we are just a bunch of kids. We are big by body, but we are so small in maturity. And thinking deeply, it hurt. It really hurt, especially if your brain is not used to it. It's like you know, you have a you have a hand you did not use for long, and suddenly you decide to um, practice a sport. 
you know you want to lift something up and down up and down and then you will see that your muscles are really hurting you after 15 minutes why because you are not used to use it you don't want to use it you're lazy so today we are going to examine something we learned from the Bible and we are going to see and study together uh, and you know today I'm, I'm, I'm like uh, I choose this topic because I receive a comment in uh, uh, from somebody which I find it very evil and very very ugly you know like I'm talking to a Muslim and he said that to me I felt I want to punish him in the face I mean what kind of talk this talk is are you Christian are you really Christian what punish him in the face what, what does that mean how you can so if you don't if you don't accept Jesus you want to punish him in the faith now so you are so you are the good Christian and he is the bad one so we need to examine who we are first before we claim to be what we claim to be how in the world somebody is a Christian and he want to punch somebody in his face because he didn't agree with him are you going to punish your husband if he didn't agree with you too or maybe you will uh, punish your wife if she don't agree with you too. So you know, uh, uh, many of us we became a fruit of movies. You know, uh, uh, punching somebody, cutting the head of somebody became like a game. It's like it's not a, it's not really. Uh, I mean, a kid he sit and he shoot people in the game. <laughs> spend the whole day shooting. So why he will not shoot? We planted in the mind of people that shooting and killing is so easy because it's in TV. Wherever you open, like any, which movie is not about shooting and killing? And if you live in such a mentality, you bring that mentality into your life, to your house. Don't be surprised if one day your son he shoot you. So we as a Christians, what we should do, what we will be, do we like to be like a Buddha sitting in his ass and supposedly he is going to give me wisdom by putting two arms in the top of each other and not moving and they call it meditation. What about we go and do meditation by giving some poor some food? You know, when I was in Asia, I saw a bunch of uh, priest, Buddha priest. I'm not attacking the Buddha, by the way. I'm just saying reality, as I believe. You don't have to agree with me. He's, you know, walking in an area full of prostitutes, and then, you know. Um, they go down and they pray in front of him and they give him some money donation whatever I mean so this is what what the, what the priests do there's the children's are used for sex trafficking he see them in the front of his eyes they are in the street is that what a priest he do so you go to your temple you sit in your ass and then when you walk in the street people they bow down in front of you and now you are the good guy because you live in peace supposedly here you see a sign of hypocrisy we go to Christians Christians they speak too much about Jesus says love your enemy okay you go to a church you see the priest saying love your enemy Jesus said ask this priest what do you think about the catholic pastor oh the catholic are bad they are disgusting they are and they even they call them a whore imagine whore what happened to the peace you have in your heart a second ago you were saying to us love your enemy a second after you are using the word whore To who? To people who believe in Jesus and love Jesus and worship Jesus. What happened? The devil suddenly is out. 
How you say such a thing to someone who believe in Jesus as God and Savior? A lady she posted for me in YouTube saying, "Oh, are you saying that uh, worshiping idols is okay? No, worshiping idols are not okay. And I never saw a Catholic is worshiping idols. They have idols. I agree." But they are not worshiping them. All of them, they knew that those are not God. They make a status for Mary. I agree, it is not right. Or Jesus. If it's an art, it's fine with me. If it's for a worship, it's wrong. But that will not make them what you claim. They broke a command of God. But who of us did not break or break command of God? If there is any of you here did not break the command of God, which one? When the Jews they were chasing a woman for committing adultery, and is adultery broken of a command of God? Absolutely. Okay. They want to stone her. They want to kill her. They want... And then Jesus said to them, they insisted they wanted an answer from the Messiah. He said to them, well, he is that without sin among you. Let him first cast a stone on her. So let us compare. Somebody broke the command of God by having a picture of Jesus. And a woman, she was having sex. Hmm. So you repeat this verse to every Christian when you go to the church and you don't cast a stone at anyone who's doing that. But somebody have a picture because he loved Jesus, you want to cast a stone at him? How brave of you. You see the double standard? Even the one who have a picture, which is wrong for me, he did it because he loved Jesus, not because he's an evil person, which means the purpose of the wrongdoing was good. For the sake of good he had in his heart, he did something wrong. Now, for me, it's wrong. For him, maybe it is not. However, that will not make him not a Christian. And why the love disappears suddenly from the heart of the Christians when we speak about something we don't agree upon, which is not really. We're not to change anything except that all of us we are sinners and we break the commands of God. So somebody he pray and he have a picture in front of him and he believed that this picture present or represent uh, Jesus. He is not praying to the picture, and you know that he's praying to Jesus. However, it's wrong, but still he is doing good, and his heart is good. He is a person praying to God. Who is your God? His name is the Messiah. The Messiah who forgive. Look like is not exist in your heart. Because when they ask the Messiah about how to pray, he says, Our Father out of heaven and forgive to us the same as we forgive to others. So what if this is was a sin against God? To make it simple for you, if I have a picture and I pray in front of it and it is say it is a sin against God. So God who forgive the ones who killed him in the cross, he will not forgive someone he pray in front of a picture because he love him. Do you understand me, guys? Yes, Paul, I know. I know that the, the, the Catholic, they have their own reasoning, but still I believe that because it's because simply, my friend, we do not know. We don't have images of anyone. I mean, what those, and we do not need images anyway. We do not need them. If it's an art, I, I, I no problem. I love art. Uh, you know, like there's some kind of arts in the churches was exist to preserve the Bible, which means people, they say that the Bible is corrupt, but do you know we have mosaic art? which is speaking about the crucifixion story more than 
2000 years ago which means if you can really say and uh, we cannot find a manuscript but we can find the mosaic art preserve the story of Jesus preserve the verses Jesus said so art can be very useful to teach children to bring us more to the story we are not we are not Taliban from the cave time so God who forgive those who killed him in the cross he will not forgive me if I have a picture in my house of uh, Mary or Jesus and I love all of them that's not true so what some Christians they do they claim that they speak for God and they are people who love Jesus and they follow Jesus yet they cannot even love their brother in Christ and even they call they cast him out he's no Christian and this is by the way not only Catholic to uh, a Protestant doing that to Catholic the Catholic they do that to the Protestant too and I'm not generalizing here when I say Catholic they do that I mean some from these some from here that is not Christian and have nothing to do with the Christianity Jesus is the one who decide who is going to go to heaven not everyone says to me Lord Lord but the one who do his will and what his will love your enemy bless those who curse you forgive we have the God of forgiveness who forgive us for bigger sin huge sin including crucifying Jesus look like some of us don't know Jesus yet <clears throat> and remember the vision always you know is coming to us from the devil a Christian he have a different view as long he believe in the father and the, the son the Holy Spirit he believe uh, and the crucifixion he believe in the Vir Virgin Mary uh, like the birth of Jesus you know I mean so what is the rest a picture and etc this is all was a particle issues Kings they divided us it's all about business and money it's not about God then we see there's other form of Christians and maybe you will be uh, like uh, wondering what I'm talking about another form of Christians I'm not talking about Jehovah's Witnesses those are not Christians or Mormon or etc those are just not even cult this is like a, a, a I don't know how to describe them I mean it's it's more than a fiction there's other group of they call themselves Christian but they gave themselves different name they call themselves Muslims Muslims are people who follow the teaching of Islam and what is the teaching of Islam is the teaching of Muhammad Muhammad is a person who he claimed that he believe in Jesus like Jehovah's Witnesses he believe in the virgin birth of Jesus like Jehovah's Witnesses he believe in Moses and Abraham he believe in Adam and Eve he believe he believe he believe but the most important thing Islam does not believe in additional not, not to believe in the crucifixion of Jesus and who is Jesus is the teaching of Jesus Islam does not believe in it when Jesus says love your enemy pray for those who persecute you where was Muhammad from that how we can say we have the same God we have the same message we have the same Jesus but we don't have the same teaching and not only we don't have the same teaching we have a very opposite teaching while Jesus saying live or you love your enemy the false Christian Muhammad was slaughtering and putting nails in people just because they made a poetry about him while Jesus was forgiving those who killed him in the cross not only kill him actually they are torturing him slow death he was worried about them and he is forgiving them so this is what 
another form of false fake Christians like Islam which teach totally the opposite message but the outside we believe we believe in Jesus and we call him Isa and this Isa is just a man and he is a coward and he is a liar and uh, he is uh, even his mother she will be uh, the girlfriend of Muhammad which means we insult Jesus by giving his mother to Muhammad as a sexual gift this is what Islam is about for us as a Christians we have to monitor our words and the way we think when a Muslim, we speak to Muslims, for example, you, sometimes you see in the comments somebody saying, you pig, you etc. How you can be a Christian and you say to people that? What pig? Just take it easy. You know, like sometimes I use the word uh, uh, donkey. Anyone knows why I use the word donkey? Why I use the word donkey when I speak to someone who's, uh, who's acting like one? Because the Quran uses it. I'm speaking to him in his belief, in his religion. I'm speaking to him in his language same time I'm not using the full language I'm using some of it which is acceptable for me as a Christian the Quran says that those who carry books but they don't understand it is the same as donkeys carrying books chapter 62 verse number five and this is fit perfectly with my topic so I'm not really saying that he is a donkey as an animal I'm using what his Quran saying. Let us say, I'm, I'm using what is right based in the person I'm talking to. He believe in this in the front of us. But you have no right to say filthy words using filthy language the F word, and yet you claim to be a Christian. You are no Christian. You do not know Christ. You talk to Muslims. You know, I get angry from Muslims sometimes, but uh, I don't, you know, because I love to save them. Sometimes you as a human, you get so upset. How in the world people don't understand me? Why they cannot? Isn't it clear, really? So you, you, you know, you, you, like you reach a point of frustration, but still you should control yourself. Remember, you are a Christian. And the second you lose control of yourself, you are committing sin against God. So instead of saving the person, suddenly you became a person who need to be saved, yourself. So, uh, when a Muslim, he speak to me about the Isa, and what he believe in Isa, for me, I believe he's a fake Christian. Fake in, uh, let us say, uh, maybe he's fake, but he doesn't know. He's following the fake Jesus, but he do not know. Even Muhammad, he tried to replace the name of Jesus by calling himself Muhammad. Muhammad means the praised one. Ask yourself, how Islam speak about monotheism, but yet Muhammad is the praised one? So who is God? If Muhammad is the praised one, who is God? All my life, as I understand that the praised one is the only one to praise, that is God. The name of Muhammad is against God. So how you follow a person who he named himself such a name? We should not. For that name alone, proving to us Muhammad to be a false man, and he's not true. There's a verses in the Bible which is really I like. Love is patient. And sweet love does not envy love is not upset neither you can read the whole chapters
This is a very beautiful definition of love. At the same time, if you love somebody, you do your best to save that person. And we should always speak to Muslims in the language of love, not the language of hate. Otherwise, we are no better than Muhammad. Sometimes you have to slam the face of the person because he's in a coma, but not because you want to really hit him physically or hurt him. You're trying to like wake up. Because if he stay in a coma, he might die. So let us always remember that we as a Christians, we are not going to be Buddha who live fantasy of yoga, but yet in the ground they do nothing to fix it. We don't want to be the same as Muslims who they believe that we do jihad to force people to be good, which is evil. How you can force people to be good by killing them? I mean, this is really crazy. And um, I mean, what, what is the good in, the, in, in that action itself? It's like saying to you, I'm going to give you poison in your food because uh, you have a headache. I'm going to help you so you will not feel headache no more. Yeah, I just killed you. So doing good is by saving lives and saving soul. If those two they don't work together, that means there is something wrong. So if I claim I want to save souls, but I destroy life, obviously I'm being evil. You have no right to take this, the life of anyone. This is God's created life. He give it, he take it. Not you. Violence is evil. No matter what was the reason you use it for. Unless, okay, you defend yourself. Somebody came to kill you, what you can do. I'm going to open Skype if there is any Muslim would like to call us and share with us. And maybe a Muslim can show us that anything in Islam match this message in the front of us in the in the in the in the screen. If you follow the same God as our God, then your book should be teaching love. Love which is sweet and patient and does not envy. Love which rejoice not in evil, but rejoice in truth. Where in Islam we can find such a thing? Right? If we have any Muslim <clears throat> would like to share with us some his uh, of his thought, please feel free, and I will be happy. Uh, let me first be sure that uh, Skype is open. So I want everybody to remember, and I'm talking to Christians who believe in the Bible, the verses we showed you, and every word Jesus he said. Remember always when you answer Muslims to answer with love, not with anger and hatred. I mean, even your anger should be uh, anger of uh, love, not anger of hatred. Like we rebuke, but we don't, we shall not curse. And we should not be violence. All right. Well, right now my uh, my Skype is open. If there is any uh, Mohammedan would like to call us, uh, feel free. Uh, you know, always when we speak about uh, someone else's religion, we don't want to be the same as the Muslims they do to us. As an example, 
A Muslim, he says, you Christians worship three gods. And we know that is not true. So if you go and you accuse the Muslims to believe in something which is not true, you are no better than them. You know what I mean? Sometimes you see comment, they are saying to Muslims things is not true. It's not really what uh, Muhammad meant. So in order to prove a point, we fabricate a meaning that will make us the same as they do. So we speak with love, but we have to be truthful. This is why it says, rejoice not in evil, but rejoice in the truth. When a Muslim he debate us, he says, like we, we saw a debate between David Wood and, and, and a Muslim, he says to him, uh, your God have part. The other guy, he says, where it says that? Who says that? Which means he's denying it. That that is a rejoice by lying. So if lying will bring a victory for you, as you think, eh, that's really very silly and very stupid. It might make you look funny in the stage. It might make people uh, praise you for being a liar because they uh, hold the same propaganda and agenda. But we knew it's a lie what you just said and they themselves they knew it's a lie so how an answer based on a lie can be a success Islam teach such a mentality that okay I'm going to call a Christian Prince right now and I'm going to lie to him as much as I can just to make it look like Islam is not what he said we cannot do that as a Christians anything is a lie is from the devil it's evil lies is evil Muhammad he said you can lie in three cases to your family to your friends to your enemies okay who's left nobody so now we have a society and religion based on lying and supposedly because you want to do good we lie the Muslim he says to you okay you have two friends they fought together and now you want to fix it between them. You, you go to the first one and says, this guy, he said he is sorry. He really love you, etc. But the guy, he don't feel sorry and he don't love him. And then they'll go to the other guy. We say we win the other guy and he really feels sorry. He love you. He don't care. And now we bring them to shake hands together. Okay, they shake hands. For how long? Neither of them really love the other and sorry. So we fix a problem by creating additional problem which later they will find out that neither of them said or he did what they claim a smart uh, sheikh well, once uh, he said and I think it was uh, uh, Zakir Naik he said okay your wife she is uh, not beautiful she asked you I am beautiful or not what do you say to her hmm. you say to her you are beautiful because if you don't say that you create a problem but look at this your wife is not a beautiful your wife is asking you am I beautiful the answer is according to the Muslims mentality I will lie to her and say something I don't believe in which mean he believed that his wife is ugly but look at this hypocrisy why she is your wife if you think she is ugly You see, when somebody marries somebody, if you see her ugly, that means you married her for a reason, which is not her beauty. And if you see her ugly, that means you are talking about what exactly? Ugly things you see in her. So you saw nothing good in this woman except her, like uh, maybe her shape is ugly for you. You can be truthful to your wife. And you say you are beautiful you are beautiful for me i don't care what people say this is why i am with you so i do not need to lie to live in peace with my wife since when and do you think the woman she is a fool she do not know if you mean it or not
So promoting ideas or beliefs that we can lie to each other is a devilish and will bring no solution but a chaos. As simple as that. Until now, I see no Muslim trying to contact me. We will see. Okay. Somebody send me... Uh, A tweet, I uh, know this tweet from uh, uh, supposedly a congresswoman. She's a Muslim. Just to give you an example, how how things work in this world. Ilhan Omar, she is a Somalian uh, a, a woman originally from Somalia, and she is quoting for us a verse from the Quran, chapter two. Verse number seventy one seventy seven. You know when a, when a, when a somebody quote for us a verse from a book, and if we go and read the verse, and the verse look embarrassing, the person himself he will say, "Oh, you are misquoting the verse." All right, you are taking it out of context. But they can do themselves that, but you cannot do that. You can take a verse and post a verse. The verse she is quoting for us does not present anything in the truth. What about you quote for us the verse after it where it says, in the case of a... <laughs> this is the verse of next to it. In the case of murder, free for the free, slave for the slave, and female for the female. So where is the mercy? You see, she just posed for us that a person of mercy is not about praying to east or to west. And look what she said. Mercy, righteous in Islam, is to believe in Allah. Since, since then, that is, that is mercy. How that can be mercy? And the last day and the end. So the one who don't believe in that, that means he have no mercy. Don't call me without asking. I will block you. Unless you are a Muslim. And look here, you know, you see how some people, they are not mature. I'm talking in a topic. A person want to call me to talk about whatever he want to say. Just let me finish at least. So, if believing in Allah is only for those who believe, sorry, if righteousness is only those who believe in Allah and the last day in the scriptures, that means there's no righteousness in mankind, only in Muslims. This is a phrase which actually shows racism. The same verse she is posting. And you guys, you should show, you should, you know, you, you can make a comment about her, uh, her silly. A post showing her how how uh, how silly what she just said because you just claim that the only one are righteous are Muslims and those Muslims is the one who give from their wealth all right and then here you will see the translation it says for the love of him where it says so you do you do righteousness because you love Allah or because you love the person the human no because you love Allah it's just because Allah he order you and then she say fit is you know uh, uh, set a free slave or a slave of, uh, free Muhammad he captured thousands of slaves and look how evil the verse after it about slavery 
slave for the slave which mean if I'm if a, if a, a white man he kill a slave the other white man who his slave was killed will kill the slave of the other white man this is righteousness if a Muslim man his wife was killed we killed the women of the other one is that righteousness and not only that a free man will not be killed for killing a slave that is the righteousness and this is the justice of Islam Where is it? you see we just quote this uh, verse after it and by the way for those who want to say oh it doesn't say that what you are saying we can go and see the interpretation right now as simple as that so this verse here proving racism that only people who have righteousness in in, in the world are the Muslims and actually the Quran the hadith confirmed that Muhammad he says that they are the best of mankind who are they the best of mankind? The Muslims. Chapter 3, verse 110 in the Quran. Okay. Well, how they are the best of mankind? Explain to us, Mr. Muhammad. The explanation is here. You are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit of mankind between two brackets here. Chapter 3, verse 110. The best for mankind are those who bring them, which means the mankind, with the chains around their necks but we just saw a verse saying free a slave anyone knows why Muhammad in some time he say free a slave anyone knows who knows why Muhammad he said in the Quran in some places free a slave what was the purpose was the purpose really freeing a slave or something else who wanna tell me Anyone knows why he said to free a slave? It's as a punishment, exactly. But there is other purpose. It's economic pur purpose. Okay, imagine I will build a church. And then I will make a verse saying, buy a candle and light a candle and your sin will be forgiven. What you would do? You go and buy the candle. So Muhammad is saying to them, free a slave and buy a slave. And who is the one who will sell the slave? Muhammad. Muhammad, he captured tens of thousands of slaves. And now he wants people to buy them. Okay, you want your sin to be forgiven. Okay, buy a slave from me. It's like a pagan priest saying to you, if you sacrifice a chicken, you go to heaven. And we have a chicken for you. You want to buy? So the purpose of that was not really freeing the slave. In the same time, it's a penalty. If you break the oath, free a slave. So you go to Muhammad and buy a slave. The caliphate, each one of them have tens of thousands of slaves. Harun al-Rashid alone, he have more than 10,000 women belly dancer in one place. Just belly dancers, just for like beautiful women. Not only, there's for sure the cook, there's the servants. No, no, those are just for dancing and sex. What about forbidding slavery? And look, Muhammad, the same one who's saying free a slave, is saying bring them. Bring all mankind with the chain around their neck. Who is the best of mankind? Is the one who brings people with the chains around their necks.
All right? Where is the verse that use can? I don't know what this guy is saying. So they say to us, lying, that Islam is against slavery. But by the way, Muslim countries until now, they cannot forbid slavery. They cannot. Because it's Islamic. The only country who can say we are against slavery, if he forbid the Sharia law. Sharia law says you can buy a slave, you can sell a slave. And you can capture a human being and make him a slave. And this is the order of the Prophet. And not only that, all of you, you heard of a mafia who kidnap people and ask for ransom. Islam practiced that day and night. No problem, my friend. And the Muslim who's saying that CP is a joke, what about you call me and let us laugh at CP? Hmm? Correct, guys? Look at the Muslims. I don't, you know, get upset. You can insult me as much as you want, but about you call me and let everybody laugh at CP the joke. Try it. Don't you want to make it happen? <laughs> make it happen, my friend. And instead of saying CP is a joke, call him and let everybody laugh at CP. I encourage you. Who of you Muslims who claim to be a scholar, he dare to have his Skype open to anyone to call? Like I do. Do you see how brave I am? And how so confident I am? To the point I can take a call out of the bloom of I don't know who? You know how, uh, how big the, the challenge is? <laughs> because you don't know what the person is going to say to you. It's a big challenge. Can you do that? You cannot. Let me get some water, please. <clears throat> All right. Islam as a religion, if we can call it a religion, is a cult based on supremacist of the Arab, the white Arab, and I am an Arab. This religion believe that the Muslims are a nation and they are the best of mankind. And because they are the best of mankind, they have a duty for the rest of mankind is like creatures. They are, as the Quran described them, what the Quran described us, as non-Muslims. If we go in the Quran, <coughs> you will see that the Quran describe us the same as donkeys and monkeys. Actually, it says that clearly. Chapter 7, verse 179. We are just like a cattle. That's why a Muslim, when he go to school, he learn from his teacher that non-Muslims are just like a cattle. And this is why ISIS, they slaughter people for they are cattle for them. This is the mentality of a slaughtering. He is not slaughtering really a human being. He is a slaughtering cattle. Literally. And then somebody want to say to me that Islam is a religion of mercy. Islam is a religion of equality. Islam is a religion of justice. Islam of religion of love. I mean, all the the list of you know. But where where is that? And actually, if you read the Quran, you will find that the Quran is written by the most funny idiot ever. Look what the verse is saying. 
already have we urged into hell many of the jinn and human kind okay hold on people are going to hell already I thought that would be happening the judgment day I'm not going to discuss the genie which is nobody saw ever but let it uh, let it happen and then he says uh, well they have hearts but they understand not they have eyes but they see not they have ears but they can hear not okay so because they cannot hear not and they cannot understand not and they can see not we send them to hell but isn't the Quran says that Allah is the one who made them hear not and see not and understand not have you ever heard of a mad cult like this before Islam teach that it is Allah who made us hear not see not understand not and then Allah will send us to hell for he made us hear not see not understand not <laughs> Oh boy. <clears throat> Read it. Read and love from the stupidity of this cult. Allah has sealed their hearing and their heart and their eyes. What? So Allah, He has sealed our hearing, our ears. And our heart and he will punish us for what he sealed you know what I'm saying do you see how stupid this verse so he sealed our heart and then he will punish us for he sealed our heart it's like I put uh, I put something on your eyes and then I say, uh, because you, you because you are blind, I'm going to punish you. Well, you are the one who made us blind. This is why the Quran is a very silly, stupid book. We cannot call it scriptures in any way, in any mean. It's a collection of stupidity. But if you do not know, if you are not a person who is educated in this topic, they can fool you. They will quote for you a verse few verses before to show you a oh, Quran saying something good huh what is that <clears throat> do we have any Muslim would like to call us For those who ask me to do a Skype interview in their channel, etc., I apologize. I will not do it. Last uh, last time I did with the with the uh, a channel, they start asking me how old are you? Are you single? I mean, what those questions have to do with my uh, my mission? Uh, so I'm not really going to waste my time in 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 a person or a, a interview, which is about me. This is nothing about me. You do not know me, and you should not. And my age, and if I am single or not, none of your business. What this is about. So, like, I agreed with people to to have me interview because they insist for long. You know, please, 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 please. Okay, okay, we go. And then, what the questions? Are you single? Okay. Well, nice to meet you. What we do here is very serious. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Uh, look what Ahmad, Ahmad he is saying. Let me show you what this Muhammad is saying. 
احمد سعيد I will put in the screen for you. Liar CP. It is because the person sealed their own heart first. That's not true. That's not true. And I will prove it to you easy. Hmm? Not only the verse proving it's not true what you said, but let us see what your prophet said when the baby is created when the baby is created Allah he write for him what he will do his bad deed his good deed everything he will do his belief his disbelief do you see it so in your cult in Islam when you are in the womb when you are a sperm and Allah supposedly he transformed the sperm in 50 days like you stay as a sperm and for 50 days in your mother Billy according to Muhammad which is very funny and then after that he will write for you you will be good or evil guy do you see it do you see it is it me saying that or this one Muhammad saying when you are in the womb the angel will come and say oh my lord he will be good or evil that is destiny he will write it down and those things will be written do you see it that is destiny in Islam so Islam is a very silly cult so I'm going to be punished for what he wrote for me this is the most stupid cult ever so he decided for me when I am a baby not even a baby yet I'm a sperm which is very funny As uh, Jibril, which is Zach and Naik, obviously, he will call Allah. He says, Allah, brother, Allah, he is going to be good or evil. Allah says, uh, His name is going to be Christian Prince and he will be evil. And the angel, he write down, he, His name is the Christian Prince and he will be evil. Allah, he is going to be male or female. Allah will say to Zach and Naik, You idiot, I just told you his name is a Christian Prince. He's a male. So what do you mean Hassan, Ahmad Hassan, that this is not a true? Everything written in the fate of Islam, you believe in fate, and fate is destiny written by Allah before you are created. You have no choice. So why are you saying it's not true? Is that your prophet speaking or me? Hmm? And isn't it the Quran say clearly that Allah the one is the one who sealed their eyes and yet you are saying to me I'm lying It's in the front of you Allah has sealed their hearing you just said to me no because they sealed their hearing first That's stupid of you to say because if they seal their hearing first and Then Allah he sealed their hearing that's mean that we have to strip it now We have Allah and those who seal their hearing. let me tell you why Guys, did Jesus say I came for the sick? Did he say that? That's very logical, right? If they are if they are sick, shouldn't Allah help him and heal their hearing? Isn't it why God He sent messengers so supposedly people will healed? You are saying to me, no. You are saying to me they seal their hearing and Allah He sealed their hearing more. That does mean Allah is the devil. <clears throat> right? Same time, you go in the Quran, you will see how Allah, you do crazy stuff. He's evil. Allah he don't want to help the Christians not only that he want to spread hatred and enmity between them okay so Muslim they say to us Allah is God and Allah sent the Prophet to save mankind 
Do you save mankind by spreading hate between them? Is that going to make the Christians really know God? What is that? This is how God he work? If I have somebody, uh, Paul, Paul as an example, one day he used to hate the Christians. Correct guys? Is that true? Not only he hate them, he go after them. Which means he hate them very much. Okay. If Jesus did the same as Allah did, he spread more hatred in the heart of Paul. What Paul will be? He will stay a hatred person. But because of the love of Jesus, Paul became one of his apostles. So here you see that Allah and Jesus, they are totally the opposite, the same as the devil versus God. We cannot match. And Ahmed Hassan, why you don't call me? So we can love, my friend. Why you don't call me? So we will love. It's you. It's your God who do not know what happened to Pharaoh, because your God he failed even to call who is Pharaoh. Your God he think Pharaoh he have a minister is Haman. Okay, go in the Old Testament and see who's Haman. Everybody will laugh at you. How Haman became in Egypt? Hmm? Haman is in Egypt and he's a minister for the Pharaoh. And Haman is the one who built the Babylon Tower for Pharaoh. <laughs> what the Babylon Tower have to do with Egypt? <laughs> and what Haman have to do with Pharaoh? And you are talking about who knows about the Pharaoh? Have you ever heard of a crazy history book like this? Haman is the one who built the Babylon Tower for for the Pharaoh in Egypt. I thought it's in Iraq. And Haman was there. How Haman he went all the way to Egypt and now he is a minister of the Pharaoh. And the one who built the Babylon Tower is the Pharaoh. That is the wisdom of Allah. Are you there, Mr. Pharaoh? <coughs> hmm. Anyway, when a Muslim he try his best to answer. He give us the best answers too. Which means he armed us always with the answer. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? <coughs> Anyone? Any half Muslim, which means he don't know much. Any strong Muslim who knows a lot. Anyone who call himself scholar. Any sheikh. All right. Any Abdul? <clears throat> no. Who is a Muslim want to show us something good about his God? And the one who uh, uh, see like this one he's posting from the book of Exodus you see when a Muslim he posts for us a verse saying look like you know uh, you do not know your Bible well what about we go and read the interpretation for this verse we can read the interpretation for the verse in the front of us from your book and the interpretation we have for the verse of the Bible from our book and everybody will laugh at you
What do you say? Who there? So in order for a Muslim to make a comment, he fabricate meaning of a verse saying something it doesn't say. We don't do that. I can show you the meaning of this verse from your books. I will not give you my own interpretation. I never did actually. Do we have any Muslim? Who is a brave Muslim would like to call us and show us something good about Islam forget about the bad things We welcome good things And remember we as a Christians please in the comment keep your love and uh, Don't forget that you are a Christian when you speak to those poor Muslims They are poor You see Jesus said time will come and they will think by killing you they are doing favor to God your God cannot able to uh, let, let me show you Abbas this is Abbas Abbas is the most smart Muslim ever in history hold on Muslim Abbas he said you uh, so your God is not able to express himself you hide behind interpretation look who is talking <laughs> no I did not hide behind interpretation because falsely you Muslims are giving false interpretation so I said well let us see how we Christians read the verses and the meaning at the end of the day is what the people believe not what you claim so when I say that your God Allah say to her man the Pharaoh he said to Haman then we go and find the Muslims believe yes Haman was a minister for the Pharaoh and he built a tower for Pharaoh so he can reach God in your case you read the verse and you claim that the verse as an example a Muslim he says to me that Jesus says the one who drink my water will never get thirsty do you know what the Muslim he claimed that Jesus saying the one who drink my piss So in order for you to claim a point, you fabricate a lie. We don't do that. We get you busted right here. We don't fabricate lies to show how stupid the Quran is. Haman was not exist in the time of the Pharaoh, and he was not with the Pharaoh. <clears throat> and he is not Egyptian. And the Pharaoh is not the one who built the Babylon Tower. Even this one need interpretation. And as long you are talking about God fail to give to make it clear for His meaning. What about your God saying nobody knows what the Quran save Allah? No one knows what the Quran meaning save Allah. So as long as you are saying so your God he failed right okay your God he failed are you talking about my God or your God look what your God saying no one knows what the Quran means save Allah like what the hey none knows the explanation save Allah so who is the one who is God failed even Muhammad do not know the explanation and here we need to ask ourselves what the point as Jack and Naki says brother you get the point a oh, brother you get the point mm -hmm. <clears throat> why God he hearted the heart of the Pharaoh you see one of the funny things about uh, about uh, Muslims When they ask a question, you might think the question is to know the answer. The question is not really to the answer because they knew the answer. If I show you the same thing in your Quran, what do you will do, Abbas? Just to show you how stupid this argument is.
Aren't you talking about the Pharaoh? You forgot that your prophet he copied thing everything about the Pharaoh from the Jews. Why God he hardened the, the, the heart of the Pharaoh? How did the heart of the Pharaoh here is about to keep what is going on to be happening? Which means God he can he can make the Pharaoh not to go to the second step, which we he will do next. Can God do that? He can. Can God make me believe in something? He forced me to believe. He can. Can God make the Pharaoh, even a person who believe in him, forcing him? Yes, he can. Can God? Can God? Yes, God, he can for his almighty. He can even control my mind. So when you read for me a verse saying that God, he hardened the heart of the Pharaoh. It does not mean that the Pharaoh heart was not hard. What it's meant that God, because he is God Almighty, Pharaoh by rejecting him, already God hardened his heart, which means he deserved what will happen next. You insult me, you refuse me, you accuse me, and now I'm going to let you go. And this is exactly what happened to the Pharaoh. To make it simple for you, you as a Muslim, you keep saying Jesus is no one. You insult the Holy Spirit, you claim it is Jibreel. And you keep doing that non-stop, non-stop. One day, God will say, okay, this guy, he insists. I'm going to let him go with his hard heart, and I will make it even go worse for him. Go more with your evil. I will not help you no more. Be hard as you wish, for you deserve what is coming. This is what the verse is speaking about. Because all the Bible teach that everybody have a free will. But in the Quran, Allah, he sealed the eyes of people so they will not see and they will not hear and they will not understand. It's not God who sealed the heart of Pharaoh. It's not God who made the Pharaoh an evil man. He chose to be evil. And God, he left his mercy from him. This is what hard it mean. You know, when we say that the Jews protected by God, <clears throat> but the Jews, they were not always protected by God. When the Jews, they sealed their heart, God, he left them without mercy, which means you decide not to have God mercy on you. You choose not to be with him. God is not with you. If God is with me, who could be against with me? You know, this is what the Bible says. If God is with me, who could be against me? But maybe you do not know that in order for God to be with me, I have to be with him. Right? Uh, Abbas, no. You cannot say that. Read the verse carefully. <clears throat> Read the verse carefully. You see, you Muslims, you, this is the funny thing about the Muslims. They play games as much they wish. First of all, is it written for the Pharaoh to be a, an evil man before he was born? Yes or no in Islam? In Christianity, no. So you are forgetting that you, as a child, you are, before you are born, Allah, he wrote your destiny. So the destiny of the Pharaoh to be evil. In the Bible, the Pharaoh, he chose to be who he is. Do you see it? Oh my Lord, he will be good or evil. Oh my Lord. Do you see it? Even the deeds you do in your life, bad or good, from a small one to a big one, even your age, even your provision, everything is written by Allah as a destiny. Do you see it? We don't believe in such a garbage. So you are trying to avoid what Islam teaching, taking things saying, oh, this is the same happened in the Bible, then happened in the Quran, absolutely false. God harden your heart and yourself, which means you are evil, stay, stay with your evil. God, he will open the doors of evil on you. What does that mean? It's mean you choose to be with evil, so why God will protect you? In Islam, no. 
in Islam is not you who choose to be evil or not to be evil. Allah, He chooses for you. Everything will happen. It is written. Do you see it? Am I making things up, guys? Do you see it? This is exactly what we saw when Muhammad was debating with Aisha. Aisha, she was thinking like a Christian woman, as if she is. When a child he died, <clears throat> an infant, they attend the funeral, and Aisha, she said, oh, this child, he will be a bird. From the birds of paradise, as you see. What Muhammad respond was, no. It might be the otherwise. Who is the Muslim want to tell me why it might be the otherwise? What is the reason for an infant to go to hell? Because Allah, he wrote for him where he will be in hell or in heaven when he was a sperm. Do you see it? But this is a child who never commits sin. Even Aisha saying he is going to be a bird. Allah messenger there's a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise for it commit no sin nor has reached the age when uh, someone can commit sin so this is confirmed that this is a little baby he never commits sin he never reached the age of sin so why he might go to hell any Muslim can tell us what is the logic why he might go to hell because when Allah created him, he decided for him, we will go. It doesn't matter how old is he. It doesn't matter he commits sin or not. And this is the answer of Muhammad. Allah, he wrote for them who will go to hell, who will go to heaven when they are in their father backbone. Muhammad, he believe in the backbone. Do you see it, Abbas? <clears throat> that is really stupid. <coughs> So here how you see the Muslims, they try to ma manipulate the meaning of their religion, giving us false answers, which is not really what is re their religion teach. What Jesus says about children, guys? He said, let the little one come to me. And if you don't become like them, you will not enter the kingdom of my father. So Jesus confirmed that the little one, the children's, for them is the kingdom of God for Muhammad no you might die as a child you never commit sin you never reach even the age of sin yet you might go to hell and where is justice in this this is evil actually it's evil to send a child who commit no sin I thought we go to hell because we commit sin no in Islam it doesn't matter what you do let me show you another hadith showing me the madness of this cult. Look at this. <clears throat> when Allah he created you, Muhammad Sayyid, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, this is very authentic. Each one of you collected in his mother for 40 days as a sperm, by the way, as a sperm. You believe it? This is additional proof that Muhammad is a false prophet because sperm live maximum of four or five days, not 40 or 50 days. And then he will turn into a clot and the sperm will not turn into a clot. A clot is a dead blood for equal period of 40 days. And then a piece of a flesh for equal. So the total of our our age in the in the in our mother uh, uh, womb is one hundred twenty days. Have you ever heard of stupid thing like this before? And then Allah sends the angel in order to write for him things, i.e., provision in his age, his worth, his weather will be uh, uh, watched or blessed in the hereafter. He wrote that for him. He will go to heaven or go to hell. Do you see it? Then the soul will breathe into him before even your soul is brought into breathe into you. Allah, He decides where you will go, hell or fire. And then Muhammad he says, and by Allah, 
a person among you may do the deeds of people of fire till there is only a cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and fire what does that mean you are doing deeds of fire like you like Christians you don't hate Jews you don't want to kill anyone you don't want to do jihad which make you a bad Muslim that person he is doing all those ugly stuff in Islam but then then what is written by Allah proceed and he does the deeds of people of paradise and he enter it so it's not your deed will enter you into paradise it's what Allah wrote at the end of the day what Allah he order proceed do you see it so if the Pharaoh was evil it is what Allah he ordered and wrote for him to proceed It's not Pharaoh he chose what to be. It's not me who chose what to be. It is not you, it's not her. All of us, according to Islam, we are just toys, programmed frogs. We are born to say, rock, rock. Oh, this is a duck. Do you see it? <coughs> Isn't it, this is a stupid cult? We are programmed. We, uh, Allah, He put a software inside us. So how this can be from God? And where is justice? So Allah, He programmed me to be evil and then He punished me for being evil? And then even if I do evil, still Allah, He might write for me, I will not go to hell for the evil I did? Yes, it says that. Read. He continues saying, and a man, a man do the deeds of people of paradise. Poor guy, pray to Allah. Wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. Blow water in his nose, which is very stupid. Uh, 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 shake his penis three times, as the prophet said. Make a prayer before he entered the bathroom. And imagine how many times you need to pray a day before you enter the bathroom. Otherwise, shaitan will play with your anus, as Muhammad claimed. So all those things he did in his life to protect himself and now doing all those things and then till there is only one cupid between him and paradise. What the heck? Let me explain to you what's happening here by drawing. You know, I like art. Hmm? <clears throat> you know, I'm very good in art, right? I'm very artistic. Okay. So you are born here today. And this is your lifespan. All right. So, Muhammad saying, You as a person, you were a good Muslim from this day all the way here. Almost there is only few centimeters between you and heaven, brother. You are almost in the door. Let us draw the door here. The door is here. This is the door of the heaven. And Angel Jibreel is behind the door. So you're almost here, brother. Almost. And now, what Allah wrote for you will take over, brother. And you start acting the act of the devil, brother. In this distant here and you go to hell so Allah he send you back all the way to the other direction and <laughs> what the heck this is God send him back the poor guy was praying to Allah all his life being a good Muslim all his life and almost there's a few centimeters between him and the door of the heaven. And then what Allah wrote for him will take over and he will go back home. What the heck? Who is a stupid when I believe in this cult? So it doesn't matter really what you do. Uh, Allah, he wrote for you already. It's a gambling machine. I don't know what Allah wrote for me, supposedly now. I might go to heaven still. You never know with this crazy God. 
I might go to heaven and I will call you from there and I will have 70 versions who have no clothes around me. And I will post picture in Instagram saying adult only. Hmm? This is a religion. So when the Muslim they try to answer us, they prove their ignorance in their books and our books. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like to have more than 70, please. You know, I think 70 is fine for me because I have a brother. He tried number. He have like 80,000 women and they give him a lot of headache. They were fighting over, you know, like uh, uh, shipping from Amazon for Victoria's Secret. And he said he have to call the police. They could not stop them. 80,000 women fighting, putting the hair of each other. This is not easy to control. How you can control the crowd like this, brother? 80,000 women fighting over one man. One woman, she would drive you crazy. Who in the world won't even 70 women? One woman, she will make you lose your hair. Go bankruptcy. And you might jump from the top of the bridge. And you will sign in the, you will sign your name in Facebook and then different name. And uh, 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 because she is watching you. And uh, if you watch a TV, she will say to you, give me the remote control. And if you eat, she will say to you, did you wash your dishes? Did you do the laundry? I mean, why you want to have all those women? What for? Even God, he created one Eve to Adam. Trust me, if he can handle more, he will, she will create for him five Eves. Hmm? <clears throat> Imagine 80,000 wives and 80,000 mother-in-law. That's that's fun. That's that's really fun. Hmm? Too much hashish. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? And not only that, what you know, forget about now about destiny, which is very stupid. I, I find it very funny when Muhammad he claimed that with the women in the heaven. They will look uh, as he described we will see the marrow of their bones imagine you see the marrow of the bones of the all those women in heaven <clears throat> hmm? this is what we will see in heaven women as x-ray That's so good. That's so beautiful, brother. Your wife in heaven, she will be doing this. Oh boy. How sexy. Mean. That's so beautiful. That's so good to be true. Allah, He promised me women who we will see the marrow of their bones. Why? Oh, what is the logic? Who is interested in the marrow of the bones of the women? Do the marrow of the the the, the, the marrow of the bones of a woman make you really like uh, excited, horny? Are you really horny now? Oh, look at her beauty, man. Look at this pose. Oh, look at this one. Oh boy, with the high heels. Allah, He promised us this. Yes, brother, and more, brother, and more. Brother, you will enjoy her fingers. What about the birds in the heaven of Allah? We will see their bones too. <laughs> My friend, this is a cult. It's super stupid and crazy. Super. No one can compete. With the stupidity of this cult. All right. <clears throat> oh boy. Thank you guys for the one who support us. 
אני אבדול? Imagine, you know, you go, uh, you go to heaven, and those women are naked. So, why, what naked? What naked mean after this? And what, what naked really? What do you mean naked? Who, who, what Nick? I wish they would wear their clothes. I don't want to see naked no more. What is this? And he would say to her, "Mean, so beautiful. You're zigzy. You're very zigzy." She would say, "She sure Allah, He made me for you, zigzy." Look at this. So beautiful, the brother. See the marrow of their bones? Yes, because Muhammad, he was speaking to the Arab who love white women. So always he exaggerate with his lies. So he was saying to them, they are so white. They are so white to the point you see even through their flesh. If somebody is so white, you can see the vein under his skin, correct? The more darker your skin, the less you see. So Muhammad is exaggerating with his lies. He knew that those Arabs, they are obsessed with white women. So to fit his promises with their obsession, he created a heaven which is about what they like. The Arab, they like to drink. Their life is about drinking women, even, even the Quran called women lahu, lahu, which means what fun. He didn't describe him as women. Allah he said, if I want to take a partner, lahu, for fun, for sex, I will take it from ourselves. He did not even say the word women. Because lahu is how they describe women they are just for fun they are created for fun they are not equal to men as Islam teach which is false because remember Adam and Eve they are created from the same material actually when God in the Bible created he, he created two Adam many of you maybe do not know that God did not create really Adam he created two Adam One is Adam, we call him today, and the other one is Eve. Two Adam. And the funny, the Muslims, they say, that do you know that the Bible blame Eve for the sin of Adam? My friend, go and read the Bible and see if this is true or not. However, it is Muhammad who claimed that. You will see the dad saying that and the Christians because they don't know what this guy is talking about This is why the debate only people who know nothing about Islam The Prophet said where is not it not for Bani Israel Meat would not decay so Muhammad will claim blame all the bad things in the world for the Jews And where it not for Eve no woman Would ever betray her husband do you see it? And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us, original sin is silly and stupid. So if you don't believe in original sin, why you are taking sin back to Eve, not to Adam? Hmm? You see the hypocrisy? And the one who keep calling me baby, don't force me to block you from the text, please. I don't want to see this comment in the chat or down in the text. That's not even a Christian of you. I am not your babe or something, what those things you say. What's wrong with people? Why, why do they have a... You cannot uh, speak normally? Are you a Muslim? This is a warning for all those who do those things.
Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Any Muslim? <clears throat> no, imagine you go to school, you are a teacher in school, and then one of the students says to you, uh, Yes, babe. <laughs> yes, baby. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Do you think we are in the bar or something? What babe? What baby? What is that? Say that to Muhammad, not to me. This guy, he accept all babe and babies. Any woman she offer herself to the Prophet, he will take her. No hesitation. Any Muhammadan? So today our main topic was that we have to be true Christians and true Christians is the one who love everybody even those who does disagree with us even those who did wrong to us be Christian my friend be Christian and to be Christian is to be love and patient love is patient and sweet love does not envy love is not upset neither I mean we have really an amazing teaching in the Bible. When you speak to someone, he's a Christian, he believes in Jesus, and this is how I define the Christians, someone who believes in Jesus as Savior, someone who believes in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, someone who do not deny the Son and the Father, someone who believes in the crucifixion of Jesus, the birth of Jesus, his virgin birth from Mary, the Virgin Mary. He believes he's coming back. That is my brother in Christ. And that person, he will be saved by his faith, not by a church he follow, not by a priest, not by a bishop, not by a Christian prince, not by you, not by any, by the Messiah only. So nobody have the right to take, and to take the title from him to be Christian. So when you speak to a Christian who you don't agree about, with something, you know, he do. Remember to speak to him as a Christian with love and patience. The Lord who says, love your enemy. He went so far to say, love your enemy. What about your brother in Christ who love the Messiah and worship him? If you claim that you love your enemy, but yet you cannot love your brother in Christ. How you can claim to be a Christian? Christian is not a Catholic, is not a Protestant, is not an Orthodox. Christian is someone he believes in Christ. Do you believe in Christ? That he is your salvation? Do you believe that by him you will be saved? Do you believe he came to this earth and he died for you in the cross? Do you believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? Do you believe he's coming back with his glory and his angels? Do you believe he will be the judge in the judgment day? Do you believe we will be with him? If you believe, you are a Christian. You commit sin? I commit sin too. A person who have a picture of Jesus, for you this is sin. Okay, we commit sin too, my friend. I commit sin, you commit sin. We are not going to go to heaven because we never commit sin. We don't even deserve to go to heaven. This is why Jesus says to the Jews, the hypocrites, if one of you do not commit sin, cast your first stone. So don't be the one who casts a stone and decide who will go to heaven or not. The Bible decides. Whoever believe in me and I will live. And the belief here is about true belief. For he said, not everyone say to me, Lord, Lord. So if a person from any church name, I don't care, he believe in the Messiah from his heart with decency, he wanted from his heart to follow the Messiah. He believed in him as he is 
the Lord, the Savior, the Son of God, God and earth. He believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He believe that there's no salvation. As he said, I am the door. I am the life. I am the resurrection. By him and for him, everything was created. He believed that Jesus the Messiah is the visible image of the invisible God. He is my brother and my sister in Christ. And no one have the right to say to him, you are no Christian. Love will save you. The one who loved Jesus as God and Lord, he will be saved. And his love will show his good deeds. For the Bible says, faith without deeds is a dead faith. So if you think you're a Christian, but you just have faith, and you don't do deeds, it's not deeds will save you, but your deed is a proof of you who you are. It's like saying to me, I am gold, but I don't shine. Well, how come? Gold does shine. It's an automatic thing to happen. So it's not your deed will save you, but your deed is a proof of who you are. This is why Jesus said the Lord, from their fruits, you shall know them. Not from their names. You can call yourself a Christian prince, but you are no Christian and no prince. From their fruits, you shall know them. And with the Lord's words, I have no better words to say. Show your fruit, my friend. So you will be known by him, not by me. I am no one. May the Lord bless you all. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And by him and with him, we are saved. And no other savior but his name. Glory to his name, for his name is powerful. The Christ is a word which is unique. And nobody can come with a name like that. And nobody can come with a person like that. And no one can find one person in the whole universe who says, love your enemy. For he is the Lord of love. That is my Lord, who is yours, Muslims. God bless you all and see you soon.